Good evening and welcome to another episode of Free Media, Free Minds, uh, the CTV show where we look at the state of media freedom in South Africa. This evening we're going to be discussing what has already become a very controversial topic, the Media Appeals Tribunal. Uh, how much should government control the media, if at all, what's the appropriate level of regulation when it comes to the content, the editorial uh, information that gets carried by the media. Uh, with me in the discussion, I have uh, Eric Longwane, sorry, Eric, Eric Longwane, the pop, uh, chairperson of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Communications, Junita Williams from the South African National Editors Forum, and Lumkom Tinde, who is a, a long-standing media activist and member of the African National Congress. Welcome, guys. Before we get into the conversation, we're going to have a quick look at an insert that's been prepared. Let's check it out. Regulation of the print media is necessary, but by the media itself, not by government, and not by a proxy body appointed by government. Uh, there is press regulation. There is a system of ombuds people uh, within newspapers and then there's a there's a there's a, a, a general ombudsman ombudsperson who who oversees that that kind of self-regulation is the way of democracies around the world ANC has been able to point out one or two exceptions but really one or two the use of of, of government or proxy a proxy body is the slippery slope to totalitarianism, unfortunately, and to a backslide into the kind of uh, press censorship that uh, that we endured during apartheid. In, in keeping with what I said about media regulation being necessary if it's if it's done by the media and not by government or by a proxy body, uh, well. It goes without saying that the Media Appeals Tribunal, which is an initiative of the ANC and ultimately of government, would be inherently flawed. It is a body outside of media and it is in, intending to control the media. Secrecy Bill, which is another, in, another way that government is trying to, to control not only media but the flow of information, that secrecy bill, or in, in, the, in their terms, the Protection of Information Bill, which might well become an act very, very, very shortly, um, that, is, that is about information and about the flow of information. The Media Appeals Tribunal is about information and about criticism. It's about, it will, it will affect, it will, it will then directly affect people like satirists, columnists, it's any form of criticism. So that it's a double whammy for the media that you have both the Media Appeals Tribunal Initiative and the Protection of Information Bill, the Secrecy Bill. Because they really are trying to close down both information and criticism. Uh, so I'm, I'm firmly against the, the institution at all of the Media Appeals Tribunal. The Protection of Information Bill, if the government were to and, and ANC were to allow and institute all the amendments that uh, civil society and opposition parties want, uh, even the uh, public defence, uh, the, 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 a, def a, a public interest defence, and, 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 and a number of, and, and reduce the punitive measures, you can understand why there's a need for some sort of protection of information. Not the way that they're doing it, but you can understand that. The Media Appeals Tribunal is an absolute no-no from the beginning. It's, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong, it's wrong because it's, it's this body outside of the media. And the media must self-regulate and does. And the media in South Africa is doing a good job. We could do a, a much better job, but, but, I, but generally speaking, the media has been doing a good job. Right. Eric, South Africa, did South Africans struggle for media freedom? Is it something we fought for, or is it, as some in the ANC have suggested, something that was forced on the people during the negotiated settlement? Um, the, 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 the ANC did fight for media freedom, and it, it will continue to do so. 
uh, and uh, it will never stop because we think that the cornerstone of uh, any democracy is around uh, media freedom. Mm. However, however, yes, yes uh, media freedom uh, does not give a blank check. Mm. It comes with responsibility. Yeah. Everyone uh, supposed to comply or to con confine him, him or herself within the constitution of the country. Yeah. Everyone in the country, we are all equal. There are, no, there are no other people who have uh, more equal rights than others and so on. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying however, because uh, sometimes when we deal with this issue, if you look in terms of the constitution, we seem to suggest that there are other rights which are more important than other, other rights, yeah. uh, like your media f the freedom, uh, whether it's uh, more important than uh, the right of dignity uh, yeah. for other people and so on. So those are the things which we need to continue balance. Lunko, you, you've suggested that the government needs to play a role in, in regulating the print media. What kind of regulation would you like to see? Um, Mark, I think, I think that is incorrect. Um, uh, there hasn't been any suggestion, at least in South Africa, that suggests a uh, government play a role. Um, or state controls or regulates print media. The suggestion that is being discussed in South Africa is that, uh, as proposed by the ANC, is that um, uh, you need to strengthen the self-regulatory system so it becomes efficient and effective. And then you complement the self-regulatory system with a, an independent um, a mechanism for appeal, um, which therefore will uh, um, be independent of the, the players, independent of government, and independent of any uh, commercial interest. Mm -hmm. that, that is the independent appeals mechanism that is being suggested. Yeah. What it means simply is you um, enact a law to establish an independent um, body, which uh, will be the body that if you are not satisfied with the ruling of the self-regulatory system, you can appeal through that body. But that body will be independent, just like your IEC, your ICASA, your MDDA, mm. so it's not government controlled. Independent, but it's mandate coming from parliament and it's, it's the judges or staffing of it would come people appointed by the government. Junita, is that something that the editors, I could imagine, being satisfied with, or would that curtail your press freedom? Um, I, I understand what Lumko is saying, and um, the first part of it, of course, I agree with, there has to be a regulatory body for the media. Um, the second part, as you said, um, was that where would that, where would those independent people come from? Would it be, if it, if it was an act from parliament, then clearly the ruling party would have a big part to play in who goes onto that board or body or whatever it would be. So I don't think that it would be as independent as, as, is, as is being said here. Mm. Um, and yet the, I think the that the editors would be um, and have expressed unhappiness about the thought of a media appeal yeah. Can, can, can but, I just but, correct? Dumko and then Eric, please. Yeah. I just want to, to correct what you're saying, Mark. The, uh, uh, there is no staffing that will be determined by uh, government. But if you gave the, the example of the IEC, the yes. IEC councillors must meet the nod of, of parliament. Yes. And the, in fact, they, I, th I they, think be approved they, by the president. Yes. The people of South Africa nominate somebody um, through organs of civil society, individuals, etc. It's not the ruling party. It's the people of South Africa through a variety of mechanisms then all what then happens in parliament is to process that and manage that process. And um, South Africa being a democracy, it's not that uh, um, uh, the other parties don't have a say. There's a process, and I think um, uh, the chair of the portfolio committee mm -hmm. could possibly elaborate in terms of um, the participation through those processes. But certainly, the, the proposal that uh, the ANC proposed, it, it says within it that you must make sure that whatever this mechanism it is within the framework of the Constitution, which therefore uh, means uh, there will not be pre-publication censorship and so forth. So it will ensure that media freedom is still enjoyed. Secondly, it's independent, and that means 
a funding system, for example, needs to be um, a system that will ensure that there is uh, no, uh, the, there is a line between your, your uh, funding and hence the parliamentary role um, to determine yeah. the budget to approve and all that. So the system that works effectively in South Africa in respect of IEC, in respect of ICASA, in respect of MDDA, and all the independent institutions. Um, would the court not play that role anyway? Uh, I mean, a lot of the time, sorry, if, if, if the people are unhappy with what, the, um, what our existing regulatory body has decided, they are free to go to court and, yeah. and question, you know, Let, the ruling there. Yeah, let's hear from Eric. We've um, already got independent regulation which can be appealed through the courts. Why do we need a government to intervene and create another layer of regulation for the media? I, I think we, m we must put things in a proper uh, context. Firstly, I think there is only one institution in the country which is democratic, it's only parliament. Not the media, no one else, it's only parliament. It's only parliament which exists because of South Africans exercising their rights to vote. Any qu person who questions that that parliament is the only democratic institution, there's something wrong with that person. Because there's yeah. not even the media itself, the owners or the editors are a democratic institution. It's but only I'm, parliament. I'm reminded, of, now, I'm, now, I'm reminded of Galileo and the principle of the, major the majority of one. One guy said the world was round. Yes. Everyone at his time insisted it was flat and he was persecuted. What about the freedom of the one person to tell the truth, publish it and promote it without being subjected to what would essentially in Galileo's time be the tyranny of the majority? No, no, no. You see, the issue is that in any environment, we have to accept the reality which exists in a particular time. Uh, as we speak now in South Africa, the only democratic institution is parliament. If there is any institution to protect the rights and freedom of South Africans, it's parliament. It can be editors or print media owners and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm arguing the point that which seeks to suggest that if parliament is doing something, it becomes wrong because uh, there are political parties, there's a dominant and so on. Indeed, the ruling party is dominating because South African wanted to dominate in terms of how they vote. Mm. So we can't question that. So we must just put that aside. It's not an issue. And parliament is the independent, it's, it's, it's only democratic institution. The issue here is that uh, we are dealing with IEC, a very sensitive institution which is running our election which the, those commissioners are elected by parliament, why there is no crisis. Yeah. Everyone uh, support, uh, IEC enjoy the support of each and everyone in the country. Yeah. There's no crisis. Why is going to be a crisis when parliament appoints a, a body which is going to make sure that South Africans can go to when they feel that sure. they have, uh, uh, something wrong has been done about them and so on. Uh, of course, even if you do that, you still have your recourse to go to, to the courts. No one will say if you don't feel that you've been uh, treated unfairly by even that, that uh, appeals board, you're not going to go to court. You still go to, go to sure. court. Okay, we're going to take a quick ad break and come back to continue this discussion. We'll be back right after this break. Welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. This evening we're looking at the ANC's proposal uh, to implement a media appeals tribunal to, to regulate uh, the content that the media carries. Janita, Eric's been saying that Parliament is the only truly democratic body. It's, it is the only elected body in South Africa. Mm -hmm. What is the media's role in democracy? That's a big question. Um, I think that um, the media's role in democracy is to make sure that people have as much information to make their decisions as possible. Mm -hmm. So de de decisions around um, which political party they, they want to vote for, decisions around um, you know, whether, whether they can trust certain bodies. So it's really there to 
to investigate and to make sure that people have the information that they need. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the starting point for, for democracy, is, is access to information. Lumco, is, is the proposal for a media appeals tribunal coming because you feel the media is not playing its role adequately? Um, yeah, the answer, the quick, the quick answer would be yes. Um, because what remember, are some of the problems you see in the media? Okay. I want to start from what Junita has said, because we agree. I think the, the role of the media in a democracy is very critical to inform, to educate, to entertain, and ensure that every citizen has got access to information. Um, and we can reflect in respect of South Africa whether that role is adequately being played. That's another debate. Um, in terms of the, the, the specific question you are asking, um, uh, surely every reader of newspapers would have seen in the last uh, a few years, um, or even in the last decade, the unfortunate um, unprofessionalism that we see in respect of our media, um, inaccuracy, unfairness, um, that uh, leads to a situation where if you open up newspapers every day, you see a number of apologies even before they are tested in terms of the, 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 the complaint system because it's, it gets acknowledged after printing that actually that story is not, is not correct. Um, I wanted to also talk to what Janita was saying earlier on, which is that um, the, the, one of the problems um, uh, that exist uh, or existed uh, uh, in respect of self-regulation in South Africa, which is not independent regulation, is self-regulation mm. funded, housed, by the print media owners who are four big um, uh, media in South Africa. Um, uh, you, if you lodge a complaint through um, the self-regulation in South Africa, you then waive your right to go to a court of law. Mm. That was one of a problem which clearly can, could not be sustained. Um, secondly, um, the, to, to say that uh, the courts can then be able to, to be the appeal a structure and we should not have an industry specific uh, intervention is to then subject a rural person from a rural uh, area somewhere in, 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 in uh, 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 whatever rural area who doesn't have the money um, uh, um, to therefore have to uh, find the money to go and contest uh, yeah. the reporting in court, which clearly but is in, unfair. But in all fairness, the, the current press ombudsman will tell you that the complaints don't come from poor South Africans on the whole, ordinary people. They come from the elite who do have the money to go to court. Junita, do you agree yeah. with, with Lumco that the quality of South Africa's media is so bad? Um, I wouldn't say that it is so bad. I know that there have been challenges in the past couple of years where um, because of and, and I know that a lot of talk has gone around about the juniorization of newsrooms, and that's a completely different mm. issue, and we could probably spend all night speaking about that because education, the training of journalists needs to be looked at. Um, the fact that newsrooms, most of the newsrooms that I know of are understaffed. Mm. So it's, for me, that's a, that's a huge issue. Yeah. Um, so I would not say that, that you know, they are sterling journalists mm -hmm. in South Africa. It's yeah. just that, that in terms of staffing, and in terms of training, and in terms of, of, of funding, the newsrooms are, are in, in, in danger of becoming even worse. Yeah. So e Eric, would you agree that the underfunding of newsrooms is very central to the problem of the quality of journalism we get on the whole? And how will a media appeals tribunal uh, address this problem? And if it won't, what should we be doing to address that problem? I think uh, one issue is that um, if you read a, a report or research which has been done, from 1996 we have your ta Comtask report uh, which was done, which clearly point to the issue which we are talking about of underfunding. Uh, the only thing which I don't understand is that from 1996 until 2011, people have still not made their mind in terms of making sure that they capacitate their journalists so that they can report quality. And they continue uh, 
uh, singing the same song with everyone else. But they've got the responsibility to make sure that they capacitate their journalists mm -hmm. so that they are able to report quality zone. From 1996, report Comtas point to that direction. Till today, that matter, I don't think has been sufficiently been yeah. attended. Hence what we are talking about in terms of investment to journalists, in terms of capacitating them to be able yeah. to report uh, accurate uh, and so on. But, but the issue of media appeals tribunal, I would think that uh, it will address what you have said originally, uh, to say you see only the elite are approaching the courts in order to deal with whatever wrong which they feel has been done. Yes, it should be so, because poor people cannot afford. That's precisely why we are saying we must have this media appeals tribunal, which will be open for everyone, for every South African, without... Uh, uh, any position you occupy. Mm -hmm. That's why that's one of the reasons we want it to say it must be there. Be sure to come in. What Eric said. Um, I think the, pro the, the challenge that we face with, with journalists being underskilled does not start when they suddenly when they leave university and they're thrown into the workplace. I think that we need to look back um, at the, the issues of education in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like I said, we know we could speak about this issue all night, but we we need to, we need to to to, <clears throat> to face the fact that hundreds of journalists have come through newsrooms since 1996, and it's not the journalists that are a problem. It's it's the people that they go to school. So the problem starts with with parents that that aren't guiding their children properly and at school, and then it comes then it's to teachers who you sure. know. I, I mean, it's a complicated issue. Yeah. It's not something that we can. Can you, you can't put it in so, a nutshell. So, so Lumco, is there not a, a real risk that an appeals tribunal will be a disincentive towards risky journalism? That, in fact, the owners of the media would want to avoid any kind of investigative reporting. And we, what we'd start to see in our media is very safe reproduction of press statements mm -hmm. from government and corporations, mm -hmm. rather than addressing what sounds like it's the core question, the quality of many of our journalists in the country, a tribunal could be a disincentive to journalism. Not really, it shouldn't. Um, I, I think uh, uh, in addition to uh, the, the, the complex nature, starting from schools right through, the, uh, I think we're missing one other big point, um, wherein we have heard a number of journalists saying, in actual fact, that's not the story that I submitted. Because sub-editors and editors, in their uh, uh, quest for um, uh, um, dramatization um, and therefore the commercial agenda, they would then try and tweak the story and say there is no story mm. um, and change the story. And the journalists come after uh, 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 writing the story and they, they say, of course they wouldn't say they uh, um, in front of their, their bosses, the editors, they would say it outside that. Yeah. In actual fact, that's not the story that they wrote. But um, to, to come to your point, um, the, 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 the intention is to, which is there in the press code, is to promote professionalism, mm. to promote um, responsible journalism. It's there in the press code. It must be fair, uh, it must be accurate uh, reporting and mm. so forth. The only problem that exists in respect of this current system, the self-regulated system, is effectiveness because of the very nature that it is uh, uh, subject to the funding by the very same uh, owners. It, the, what is being proposed is a system where you, you make self-regulation strong, okay? So which means you do look into even the structure and the funding mechanism of the self-regulated system. Then the appeal mechanism will be, as it says, for appeal purposes, by a body funded publicly we either through a partnership between public funds and private funds or whatever formula that is, that is, that is agreed to. And then uh, uh, empower it to um, be able to take decisions, whether it's in terms of um, penalizing, not the journalists, uh, but the media house. Mm. So that um, uh, uh, this question of chasing um, uh, money through sensational journalism become discouraged and we ensure that we have professionalism and responsible journalism. Yeah. That's the intention and I think um, uh, if we were to make sure that uh, as, as we come to, because I think we need to acknowledge one thing, um, 
editors, media owners have acknowledged the problem of unprofessionalism in journalism in South Africa. I can quote the number of um, that acknowledgement. And as a result, then there was a process that reviewed the self-regulatory system. And even after that process, there is now the Press Freedom Commission, which is also acknowledging that there is, there is a problem. And I think, therefore, we, we have converged ideas. We need to now uh, make sure that the outcome of the intervention is an outcome that will protect and guard against what you are saying. Mm. And I think together as South Africans sharing ideas, we could achieve that. Jonita, is it fair to say that there's a convergence, that everyone's agreeing that the current self-regulatory system is no longer appropriate for South Africa? No, no. No, that's not that kind well, of convergence, that. Mark. That, that's, no I was surprised. That. Maybe I no, missed no, 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 I, I think what, what Lumko was saying was that is that we're moving, that it seems like we, we're all questioning the same issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that the press ombudsman is that, you know, there's a press commission, they're looking into strengthening that body. Yeah. So definitely, yes, that, that part we, we agree on, that, that it's being looked at. Yeah. And what kind of changes would SINEF like to see taking place to the current body? Do you see a role for the state in the regulation of the media at all? I think we want to keep the state as far as away as possible from any kind of regulation of the media. Mm -hmm. I think we're very clear on that. Um, I think the kind and, of changes... And the NC agrees with you on that. Yeah, and... and, yeah. Um, and no one has suggested. <clears throat> I know that, that you are you sure. speaking about independent regulation mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah, I'm not sure yeah. about the semantics of that, but anyway. Um, I think that yeah, the kind of changes that, that we would we would like to see is, is you know, a strengthening of the body and for a long time Joe um the press ombudsman was working on his own. Now he has someone that's working as a deputy and he's you know, his office is growing and I think mm -hmm. in order to deal with the kind of workload that they're dealing with, they do need more people. Mm. Um, in terms of the changes, um, I wouldn't want to preempt the, the, the work yeah. that the commission is doing. So, so I, yeah, I'd like not to comment on that. Right. Um, in terms of the commercial imperative that Lunko was speaking about earlier, um, I think we, I think the, there's no moving away from the fact that media is a business. Yeah. And I think a way, one way that if if um, let's let's if let's side tie it up on that note because I think what we're really talking about here. The first question is, should the media be regulated at all? And if we say yes, then we need to say, what about Galileo? Those people that have got powerful truths to share with us, but our consensus of the current historical moment will crowd them out, say it's unacceptable. What we've heard tonight is that both people from uh, political parties, parliament and the editors are in favor of some kind of regulation. The question is, who should be doing the regulating? Should they get their mandate and their power from the corporations that own the media? Or should they get their power from the democratically elected officials who are accountable to political parties? My fear is that the truth could be the victim in both scenarios. And I'll leave that for you to think about. You've been watching Free Media, Free Minds on CTV, show brought to you by the Alternative Information Development Center and the Friedrich Ebert Stichting. I thank my guests for your time and a very interesting uh, conversation. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. I have studied the idea of a democratic